All right, so I guess the guitar is a little out of frame, but that will have to do. You can see most of it, at least the important parts when I'm playing. So welcome to our streaming session today. This is a little earlier than I usually go, but sorry, that's just how these things work sometimes. And hopefully you can catch the stream after it posts. So what we're going to do today is a little bit what we do every day. We're going to talk about music. We're going to play a little music and talk about playing music. So that's pretty much it. <laughs> if those things don't appeal to you, then maybe stick around and see if there's anything else that we talk about that maybe does appeal to you. Uh, uh, I do like to talk about the camera equipment that I use and we can uh, go down that rabbit hole if you'd like. So if you have any questions about the camera setup, I'll go through it here in a second. But first I just wanted to introduce the stream and tell you a little bit about the guitar that I will be playing today. This is my Ernie Ball Music Man. This is a USA made in San Luis Obispo, California. And it's, a, it's an Axis Super Sport is the model name. And I know that sounded a little awkward, but it's the Ernie Ball Music Man Axis Super Sport. A little clearer. So this is kind of the take on the Eddie Van Halen guitar because between PV and EVH, which is the current Fender owned iteration of the Eddie Van Halen guitar, Eddie Ball, uh, Ernie Ball Music Man was Eddie's guitar brand that he signed with. So he made what is essentially the EVH guitar or uh, the, this style basically, where we have a short horn here, a small cutaway horn here. It's kind of like a mix between a Tele and a Les Paul and the specs that Eddie liked playing when he would play when he was alive. So this is the next generation. Once Eddie left EBMM, Ernie Ball Music Man, he went off and did his own thing and eventually kind of licensed everything through Fender. But in the meantime, this guitar continued to be made. It was, you know, made by that company. So they were like, well, let's just rebrand it. And they called it the Axis Super Sport which I don't know what, what you think of the name or not. It's kind of kind of generic to me, but I really love the guitar. So it makes up for it in playability. So it's a rosewood, for the most part, rosewood guitar, meaning we have a rosewood neck, rosewood fretboard, rosewood top, which is, I believe, two pieces matched here, but it might be one. It's hard to really see a seam if there is one, but it's beautiful. And then the back is basswood, which all of the EVH style guitars are. Eddie Van Halen was not a big proponent of tone woods. He thought that all of the sound came from your fingers and of course your pickups. So he was much more of a stickler for that. But tone woods, he was like, give me basswood, call it good. And all of the, the decoration and filigree is kind of up to the guitar maker for the specific model. And this is a 2007 model, so it's right smack dab in that 2000s era of guitars. It's really high quality, made in the USA still, and just a really nice playing guitar all around. So we have two humbuckers that are the Zebra style. I think they are actually DiMarzio's, but I could be wrong. They could be EBMM branded, but definitely we have the Zebra style humbuckers with screws on the tailpiece of the black and just bare white pole, pe bare pole pieces on the white and two white witch hat knobs. Volume tone makes it nice and easy. I love guitars like that. And you might expect to find a tremolo or a whammy bar on this guitar. And in most Eddie Van Halen applications, you'd be right. But I'm just not that kind of player and I don't gravitate towards the Kaler, the Floyd Rose, even just a, a whammy bar on a Stratocaster. I generally leave that unscrewed. And this is just a regular old stop bar tailpiece a one piece unit with the saddles here, it's kind of similar to the Telecaster. Um, simple, utilitarian, still very, very usable with the, the individual saddles. So tuning is very precise on this guitar. And uh, I believe we have a tusk nut or some other graph tech. It's uh, one of those notched nuts. So it apparently helps keep down the friction on the nut. And we have locking tuners, which are not branded. I wouldn't be surprised if they're just Ernie Ball Music Man house tuners, but they're not branded at all. And 22 frets, I believe. And the truss rod is uh, the truss rod 
uh, adjustment is right here. So that's this guitar. It's a really great guitar, bolt on neck with five bolts, sort of unique and string through design. Here you can see the ferrules on the other side. And the neck I really like because it's a satin neck, but you can see once you get to the headstock, it glosses back up and it starts being shiny again. Let me see if I can catch that light. There you go. And the neck is not, the neck is not shiny at all. It's very glossy or very satiny. And you know, a lot of people like that, including myself. So that's the guitar we're gonna play today. Let's talk about our camera. Right now, the audio and video is being captured separately and being fed into the computer. So the camera is my Canon, the camera is my Canon R6, which is not the newest iteration of camera from Canon, but it's one of their newer mirrorless full frame sensor cameras. So really great camera that I love and I use it at work and here obviously. So it gets a lot of use. I've got a 35 millimeter prime lens on there, also Canon branded. It's one of their newer iterations and it's a, it's a really clear and great lens. So that's the camera. It's being fed into our OBS studio, capturing the video. The audio for me right now, I'm mic'd up with a Sennheiser AVX wireless microphone system going into the Focusrite Scarlett 18i20. Audio interface, pretty standard style of interface, just has a ton of inputs and outputs. And I try to use them all. Sometimes you can't, but you know, I have this room wired six ways to Sunday. So that's uh, the, the spoken audio that's being captured. Everything else, we have microphones on the bass amp, an SM58. We have an SM58 on the guitar amplifier, which is my orange SM, I'm sorry, my orange Rocker 30. And that is a 30 watt tube amp that just rips. It's plugged into a, uh, uh, an EVH, and there you go, another EVH tie, an EVH 2x12 cab, the white variety with two Celestian uh, cream back 75 watts. So that's the guitar setup for today. Very good, clean sound, but where this amp really excels is when you add some dirt. So we've got the Orange Rocker 30 EVH 2x12 cab with the Celestian cream backs, and on bass I'll be playing a Fender Precision V, five string bass, and that is being plugged into my Fender Rumble 100 watt, just single 15 inch speaker amplifier. So that's the setup. I have my Pulse drum set, which has been enhanced pretty much everywhere except for the kick and the toms. But uh, that's what we're gonna be playing. And that's what you'll be hearing. Have Zildjian and Minel cymbals with one little peisty, little splash deal. And otherwise, I may throw something else at you halfway through. I don't know. It's always something else here at this stream. So if you have a specific request of a guitar that you'd like to see, like to see, see or hear, I guess, or both, then put it in the chat and I'll go ahead and play that. So uh, you, you've got Les Pauls, Tellys, Strats, Carvins, PVs, all kinds of things to choose from, including a baritone, a Squire, and Gibsons, of course. Uh, SG Explorer. So you name it, let's play. All right, so if you're brand new to this Twitch stream or this otherwise live stream, then you'll learn very quickly that music is kind of the, the point of this. And, you know, I have a lot of things to talk about, but I really want an outlet to talk about music. And I find it really difficult to have conversations about music because everybody has their own tastes and everybody has their own level of understanding and I always try to find the most democratic or diplomatic way to talk about music so that it makes sense to the broadest amount of people and that's in my own day-to-day -day life as well as here and and I don't consider myself the be-all end-all expert but I do spend a lot of time thinking about music and thinking about how to be a better musician and how to play better and for me it's it's more of an obsession than a hobby but I don't make money off of it so if you want to throw me some money I'll be happy to accept it at this point it's mostly my outlet for joy and I'd love to get to a point where I could monetize my playing but you know it's a big wide world out there and there's a lot of things to do and see and it might not happen 
But in the meantime, that's why we're here. So I like to play by myself quite a lot. I, I don't love to do that because I prefer to play with other people. Even if it's just one other person, you can make a surprising amount of music with just two people. But I have made it my quest to make the most amount of music with just one person because very often it's just me down here and I want to have a rich band texture which involves not just one instrument playing guitar by yourself. You can really do well with one guitar and there are lots of acts where it's just a person and a guitar. But I love the full band. And if I can contribute in any single way, then I try to. And I purchased a looper pedal, which I'll try to hold it up here without ruining everything. This is the it's not really a looper station, but it has that capability. This is actually the Line 6 DL4 delay station. And it's a very, very good delay station in that it has lots of options for delays and adding that effect. But it also just happens to have a 14 second looper, which I use most of the time. So I have that setting selected and I have the guitar and the bass simultaneously plugged in to the looper from two different amps so it's basically a stereo signal coming into the line 6 dl4 station and being output to both amplifier speaker cabinets so kind of the best of both worlds and if you wanted to add more than that then you'd kind of have to get a little more creative but for me that's the the nirvana trio you have guitar bass drums it's the rush trio guitar bass drums you can even add keyboard in lieu of a bass or i guess in lieu of the key the, the guitar too but i find the guitar bass keyboard the nirvana trio is the way to go so i guess that has to be me on all accounts so let's come up with something that is fun to play
ridiculous. All right, so there's a little smattering, a sampling, you name it, of what we do around here. And sometimes I have friends down here, sometimes I don't. Most of the time it's just me and that's fine because I've learned how to play with myself just fine. So take that as you will. And uh, I usually like to talk about a musical concept, a specific concept while on the show today. And I haven't really come up with one yet. So let's play one more song and maybe one will come to me. And I say song, but these are really jams. These are not very complex songs. These are not very, I don't know. They, they have very limited scope, but it's not, it's nothing to sneeze at, they used to say. Whereas you can still make a reasonable amount of noise and have a reasonable amount of musical integrity and differentness that you can build some cool phrases and, you know, put it all together. I have to lay the lead over the, the rhythm track in post, but I do that just so that uh, you can really get a full-on four-piece band out of just one guy. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I have a YouTube channel called Tanner's Favorite Things where I take my live streams, I chop them up and edit them together so that they're more of a cohesive song from start to end, and that's it. So go ahead and check out my YouTube channel, Tanner's Favorite Things, not right now, but after this stream, go ahead and do that. You'll find some of my previous streams and some other content where I talk about some of the gear that I love. So let's see what we can come up with. Maybe something a little slower. of the work there. Sorry folks, 
That one just wasn't quite there. Let me try it again. The problem with the looper is it has to be 100% precise on all tracks. You lose sight of one and it's over. Let's try that again.
Alrighty, so there you go. Another little jam that we put together, all four parts there. Three for now, but four in the future. So I was trying to think of a musical concept while playing, and I just thought about the concept of playing softly. And it's very difficult to play this instrument softly because it wants to do this. <laughs> It's not, it doesn't want to be soft. It wants to be loud, it wants to be fast, it wants to be in your face. But that doesn't mean it can't be played softly. And that's the same goes for the bass and the drums and any other instrument for that matter. And, and a lot of, and the voice for that matter as well. And a lot of time is spent learning an ins how to play an instrument softly. Because if you play loudly 100% of the time, Number one, you're going to drown yourself out and your ears, and it's just going to be tiring and not very much fun. And two, for me personally, and this is more of a taste point, but I find music to be more exciting when it has dynamic richness, which is another way of saying different volumes. Basically, dramatic build or something that indicates that the songwriter actually put some time and craft into their song. And of course, I realize as saying that, that that's the exact opposite of what we do in here, where we're just laying down a very, trying to be metro metronomically sound uh, with the tempo and playing as rigidly as possible, I guess. But when, when you play soft, you don't, here's my biggest problem with playing soft, is that people, or people's brains rather, equate playing softly with playing slowly. And that's not the case. A tempo is the same tempo regardless of volume or dynamics. A tempo is totally separate. It's in beats per minute is the unit to indicate tempo. And yes, you have meter, which indicates how many beats go in a bar, but your tempo remains as written or as dictated, I guess. Not all tempos will stay the same, but within a certain threshold. So when you have volume and you lower the volume people tend to relax or which is good you should be relaxed but they don't relax in the right way they relax in the tempo way and that's the wrong way to relax go ahead and relax your body and when you're playing softly you do have to be as relaxed as possible because in order to play loud you can really get in there and and weighing on some things but to play soft you have to be very precise and more precise than when you're playing loudly and that goes doubly for the tempo. So this is what my challenge to you as musicians, whatever your instrument is, whenever you're practicing, put on a metronome and play to it. <laughs> I know that sounds pretty stupid and old school, but play loud and play soft and see how your, your dedication to the tempo remains through the different variations of volume. And you'll probably not be surprised to find that when you try to play quieter, you play slower and you're on the back of the beat. And maybe when you play louder, you're on more of the front of the beat and starting to jump it a little bit. So neither the twain shall meet. Tempo is completely independent from dynamics. Rhythm, volume, two things. And they do not correlate in any other way other than in your brain. So you have to kind of decouple them. So. We're going to try to play softly and yet rhythmically precise. And I want to play something in 7-8 or 7-4, depending on how you count it. I like to think of it as subdivided 7-8. Sometimes it goes 1-2-1-2-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-1-2, which is basically 14-8, because you have two groupings of seven that are slightly different. But, you know, who, who the hell's counting? I call it 7-8. It's got a ba 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 and the subdivisions are sort of academic at that point. So that's what we're going for. I love the asymmetrical feel of 7-8. You'll hear it, and if, if you open your ears, you'll find that you hear it a lot in movie soundtracks. Whenever there's some sort of scene where people are fleeing or they have to be off kilter in any way, they bring out the 7-8. It's very dramatic. Um, so anyway, take a listen to your next movie and you might find some asymmetrical meter in there. All right, let's see what we can come up with here. 
right, we've got a chat to respond to. So, sorry if I don't respond to chats right away, but we have, oh, the Night and Moon podcast sends a heart. Well, heart right back to you, Night and Moon podcast. For those of you who don't know, Night and Moon podcast is the podcast that I am a part of. Both my girlfriend Gabby Luna and I participate in this podcast and we release semi-weekly. We actually have been releasing every week in October, but we have a few episodes before October and all through November and December. So check out the Night and Moon podcast on your local streaming service, Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, I believe as well. So thank you for your comment, Night and Moon. I think this guitar is a little out of tune, so I'm just going to tune it up real quick. And I think I got one more left in me for you guys, but let's go ahead and make sure we're in tune. Okay, just a few strings. <clears throat> so, playing quiet. I, I don't know if you noticed particularly, but I was trying to play quieter than I normally do, even for myself. And I tend to play, you know, not all that loud because there's no reason to play that loud in a room this small. But practicing playing quietly is very telling to your sense of meter and your sense of rhythm and your sense of tempo. And don't confuse quiet with slow. That's my lesson for the day. This goes for musicians just starting out, people who are in the New York Philharmonic, you name it. This is a phenomenon across all talent levels, including myself. I don't, I'm not saying that I'm exempt of this, but it's something that I'm aware of, so I work towards being better at it. And I've done a lot of work singing very quietly, and that was my main profession at one point, and now I'm trying to sing on the guitar and being able to do so quietly is an asset for any player. So that's my lesson for today. All right, let's wrap it up with something sort of fun and uh, let's see what we can do. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just fiddling around. I don't know what I'm going to play when I come on this this live stream. I just don't know. I haven't prepared anything. I didn't practice anything. So I'm just trying to come up with musical riffs, I guess is the best way to, to name it or label it, but riffs that are interesting to me and that can be added to with the bass, guitar, and of course the drums. So I want to play something a little rocky is what I'm going for just to air out my process going for something a little rocky something fun to end the night doesn't necessarily have to be in a, a funky meter but if it if it ends up being that so be it but uh, I'm just trying to find some chords that I, I think sound together at this exact moment <laughs>
of you wondering what distortion pedals I use, I have the Ibanez Tube Screamer, the TS9. It's the green and silver one with the white Ibanez and white and blue Ibanez logo. Really great dirt pedal. pedal. I like it as my rhythm crunch. But when I kick it into high gear, I love that Metal Zone pedal. I know that it's people have a love-hate relationship with the Boss Metal Zone MT2 pedal, but I have the love relationship with it, and I think it sounds great. So there you have it. That's my whole rig, the Ernie Ball Music, no, that's not it, the Ernie Ball Music Man Axis Super Sport, which is mostly rosewood and basswood, and the Orange Rocker 30 plugged into the EVH white 2x12 cabinet with Celestian cream backs, so cream on all accounts there, bass, Fender Rumble 100 amp, Fender Precision V bass, and of course my drum set which you see behind me. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate your time and contributions. We have some more um, messages here. Looks like we have a dog and a kitty. No, a kitty in sunglasses from Night and Moon. So yes, thank you, Night and Moon podcast. Go ahead and check it out and pet your cat and your dog if you have one. And I will see you next time. Thanks again. I'm Tanner Knight. Hope to see you on the next one.